Hello and welcome. I am Chakshu Roy and you are watching Laws in the Making on Rajya Sabha TV. Today on the show we are discussing the Indian Medical Council Amendment 2nd Ordinance 2019. The Indian Medical Council of India, constituted by the Indian Medical Council Act of 1956, has been responsible for regulating medical education and practice in India. Under the 1956 Act, the MCI has been superseded and reconstituted within a period of three years. The ordinance proposes to supersede MCI for a period of one year and have a board of governors excise the power of the MCI in the interim period. To discuss the bill, I have on the show with me Dr. Gagan Malhotra, Senior Pediatrician and Physician and Secretary IMA, and Dr. Yatin Balhara, Associate Professor of Psychiatry at the All India Institute of Medical Sciences. The Indian Medical Council ordinance increases the strength of the board of governors from 7 to 12 members. The board will include members with prior administrative experience. These changes have been proposed to increase transparency and ensure good governance of medical education and profession in the country. Medical education and practice in India is regulated by the Medical Council of India. Some of the key responsibilities of the MCI include determining the criteria for medical qualifications. The Council uses its criteria for medical qualifications to give recommendations to the central government. The MCI is responsible for setting an education structure to obtain these qualifications. It also maintains a register of medical practitioners in the country. Uh, see, MC Medical Council Act has been there since 15, 1956. However, in 2010 it was dissolved and a board was formulated by government at that time. And that board is looking after the MCI work. So there was some controversy in 2010, board was, uh, the MCI was dissolved and then this board was formed. A, a five member, seven member committee is there which is looking after uh, the MCI work only. The work remains same but not by uh, the MCI of that time. Now it is a board and there are eminent physicians, surgeons in the board who are looking after this work. The overhaul in the regulatory structure of the MCI has been proposed to bring greater efficiency and transparency in India's medical education. The ordinance proposes to supersede the MCI within a period of one year instead of three years. In the period that the MCI is being reconstituted, the Board of Governors will exercise its powers. The ordinance also expands the number of members in the board from 7 members to 12. The Indian Medical Council is the body which governs the medical education in the country. The importance lies that uh, we want that uh, uniform medical education should be there throughout the India. And it is the role of the Medical Council of India or Indian Medical Council to do it. Plus, PG qualification, that means the, whatever the after the undergraduate qualification of uh, doing the MBBS, person has to go for the MD and MS, there will be a uniform system in, in for that matter and the medical council will look after this. And another important thing is that uh, whosoever going for the foreign medical qualification, for the medical qualification outside the India, that has to be governed by the medical council. And that is, means ki the person, if a person is going to the outside, that institute should be well equipped and well qualified. To ensure quality governance of medical education in a country, the Board of Governors will exercise the role of the MCI till it is reconstituted. The Board of Governors includes persons of eminence in medical education. The increase in numbers of members allow people with proven administrative experience to be part of the Board. The board will be assisted with a secretary general appointed by the central government. The ordinance was promulgated on February 21, 2019. Two similar ordinances had been promulgated previously, which have lapsed. Gagan, I wanted to start the program with you. Uh, you are the you are you know one of the secretaries of the IMA, uh, IMA, and I wanted to understand from you what is the role of the Medical Council of India in regulating the medical profession in the country. Uh, see, the Medical Council uh, maintains a register of the, all the allopathic doctors who have done their at least MBBS or their post-graduation. So, we have a registry of the entire doctors in, in India. And uh, uh, since 1956 by Indian Medical Council Act, the MCI was formed and this was to, supposed to structure and organize and also the education and the ethics and what 
guidelines and principles the doctors need to follow. So this since the, as just highlighted 2010 and again it has been dissolved in 2017 by uh, our respected uh, Dr. Nadda ji uh, in 2017 now MCI stands uh, dissolved and the board is formed. And okay, so yeah. let me kind of interrupt you there. So what you're saying is after you graduate, so you're a doctor after you graduate from yeah. college uh, then you have to get registered, registered with the MCI the Medical Council before of India. you can start the practice yes, uh, yes, of yes. medicine. Yes. So the so one of the things that the MCI is doing is that it is regulating the practice of medicine in the country. Yes. Okay. Yatin, you want to talk a little bit about what else is the MCI doing other than the practice of the profession of medicine? So besides uh, regulating the practice of the clinicians and physicians in the country, another mandate of MCI is to regulate the education, medical education which includes the undergraduate as well as postgraduate education. Besides this, they also regulate the medical establishments, the hospitals, the clinics uh, and the specialty centers across the country. And finally, they also do the licensing of the medical practitioners. Okay. So these are the other roles and mandates that MCI has. So, does M so Gagan, does MCI run exams? Uh, so, for example, do I need to give an exam to be registered on the rules of MCI or after I've done your uh, MBBS and you cleared your internship, you automatically become, uh, become qualified for the MCI register. Okay. That's and what, uh, Yatan, what part does MCI play in regulating education? You said, you know, yeah. it plays a part in regulating education. So, what, what MCI it? does is that it ensures that there is a uniform curriculum for medical education across the countries. So, all the teaching medical hospitals and medical centers which are there in the country, they have to follow MCI approved curriculum. So this means that there is a structure to it. So if you talk about undergraduate medical education, there are uh, professional years and there is a well-defined curriculum and syllabus. So every institute has to follow them. There are examinations that have been stipulated that one has to clear. And once you complete your teaching, you have to clear one year clerkship as well. Okay. So that's how the uniformity is brought to the undergraduate medical education. Similarly, there are norms for postgraduate education as well. So the medical colleges across the country, they have to follow those norms for postgraduate qualifications as well. Okay. And Gagan, is this, so all allopathic doctors you mentioned are registered within the MCI, the but council. there's also a dental council, I believe. Yeah, dental council is a separate body and it has got a separate entity and a separate register, just okay. like the MBBS registers. Okay. So let me ask you a follow-up question to you. So let us say that, uh, you know, these are important functions that the MCI has to do. So clearly it's an institution, uh, you know, which plays a regulatory role. So who kind of does these things within the MCI? Do they have a body within the Medical Council of India? Yeah, MCI, when it existed, it is an elected group of members which are elected by the people themselves. Some, one is the president and the secretary and the, then the other members. And uh, then it works as a complete uh, unit. So they have a, a rule book, guidelines and everything. Okay, so so what you're saying is anybody who's registered uh, as a doctor then votes in an election to yes. elect the president yes. of the MCI and then there's a team of people who then do these different functions. Is, yes, is yes, yes. Like the president and the secretary and then the vice secretary and the, the things. Okay, and what is, you know, what is it that happened in 2010 that uh, led to the, you know, so yes, the, the I, vote, the, a, the, yeah. I would just like to say the first thing is that there's a lot of gap which is coming between the patients and the doctors because of lack of information. There are a lot of physicians are working very hard day and night to make their parents and the patients very happy. So these kind of things uh, create a, a lot of gap in the minds of people then uh, and there was a lot of corruption charges in the Medical Council of India and like any uh, bodies some people in the organization are corrupt and uh, action was taken against them and uh, they had to be uh, penalized and uh, other things. That's the reason the MCI was dissolved because it was becoming more autonomous and the people were doing uh, uh, for accreditation of medical colleges. Uh, colleges which were not even having proper standards, they were giving accreditation for money. Okay, so uh, Gagan brought out an interesting point that one of the things that the MCI does is it also regulates the accred so who can open up a medical college and what kind of mm -hmm. college is it? Can you, uh, Yatin, can you tell us yeah. a little bit so more about MCI that? So MCI has its well-defined norms. So if you have to initiate a medical college and it has very well-defined norms that and that is in terms of the staffing, including the faculty in different disciplines, the infrastructure, the kind of space that you have and also the clinical facility that is attached to the medical institute. So those norms are there depending on the number of seats that you want to have for your MBBS course. Okay. So that has been well documented and you have to meet those norms in order to get the accreditation.
Okay. And also you need to get it renewed periodically if you want to continue offering this MBBS course. Obviously, so, so just because that you've, you've started a medical college, you need to keep up with certain standards and the MCI then come and reviews yeah. these standards so and make sure that you're, you know, that what you're teaching is up to the mark and your facilities are up to the yeah. mark. So there are periodic inspections that MCI, they designate a panel who visit the facility in person and they ensure that those norms and requirements have been met. And then based on their recommendations, the licensing is renewed. Okay. And Gagan, but clearly a, a, a country this big, you know, can not function on simply one body. Earlier in the program, uh, you know, when you and I were talking, you mentioned something about the fact that there are state councils also in addition to the central council? Yes, every state has council like Delhi has a Delhi Medical Council and uh, we have a very robust body of doctors who are taking care of those functionalities and uh, they take care whether the uh, and it is an anti-quackery uh, unit also and there is a, a grievance redressal mechanism so that the patients can approach the body and, and some doctor is not uh, up to the mark or something, something terribly wrong has happened. It can happen anywhere. Okay. So and what is and what is the relationship between the state units and the central medical council? See, the uh, there's a association which is called the Indian Medical Association. This is an autonomous body and it is a self-elected body and it helps in formulating the guidelines and also when MCI was in existence, it also was as an advisor to that also. So we have yeah, under IMA different different state branches okay. uh, like I just mentioned. And it has got proper mechanism of uh, uh, district wise been distributed like Delhi has been distributed into 16 different districts uh, for medical associations and 16 uh, small associations under the umbrella of Delhi Medical Association under a pan umbrella of Indian Medical Association. So they are interconnected. We have around 14,000 registered doctors who are working with IMA. Okay, so it's a tiered structure starting tiered structure. right from the center, yes. going down to the straight level yes. and also going down to the yes, district yes, level. Yes, yes. Yatin, before we get into a break, very quickly. So, in terms of, you know, the scope of what the MCI does, is it well staffed to be able to do all these functions? So that was one of the uh, issues that was being discussed way back in uh, 2010, that the kind of mandate that MCI has and kind of uh, the quantum of work we are talking about, whether it is well equipped and well staffed for that. So that was one of the reform that has been discussed over these years and uh, there is a need and there is a concern that has been expressed by multiple uh, people and stakeholders that we need to strengthen MCI. So what MCI does is that it has its own employees that, it, uh, that work for MCI on a regular basis, full time basis. But besides that they also hire part time employees which carry out various assessments and functions. Okay, it's time for us to head into a break. When we come back, we will discuss the provisions of the ordinance. Welcome back. On the program today, we are discussing the Indian Medical Council Amendment Ordinance of 2019. The ordinance proposes to supersede MCI within a period of one year and have a board of governors excise the power of the MCI in the interim period. This restructuring is to ensure greater quality of medical education in the country and bring more accountability and transparency. A parliamentary committee had submitted its recommendations on the restructuring of medical education in the country. The committee recognized that the current structure of the MCI doesn't allow for the entry of skilled professionals. It, there was also a failure to meet contemporary challenges of medical education. Good health infrastructure must be a top priority. So good ground level education can only enforce it. They keep the register of all medical practitioners from recognized institutions to avoid frauds and corruptions. MCI also rolled out the idea of starting the NEET entrance examination as a mandatory selection criteria for selection to medical and dental colleges. I believe, last but not the least, it also reciprocate with foreign countries in order to establish means to provide mutual recognition of medical qualification. There is more work required to do so that Indian medical students should face less challenge to onboard on abroad medical systems in countries like Russia, UK, US, Canada, Australia. 
I hope and wish it will get to another level and improvise a lot with this recent amendments and new structure. In order to bring transparency, accountability and quality in the governance of medical education, there has been a restructuring of the MCI. For this purpose, the MCI will be suspended in one year. The role will be entrusted with the Board of Governors consisting of eminent doctors for a period of year or until the council is reconstituted. Yeah, previously there was uh, seven board members. Now it has been increased to the twelve. Of course, if the number is more, then of course the it is it uh, decision has to be combined, well established decision. They can so if the number is more because previously they were uh, around 150 members of the medical council of India. They take a decision at of the general council. Now it is the uh, 12 members only. Said so if the number is more, there should not be any problem, and uh, they can take a decision. Well informed decision. The Board of Governors will be a body that will be seen as responsible for ensuring efficient governance of medical education in the country. The ordinance proposes several changes to its structure to carry out its role in greater capacity. 1. The number of members has been increased from 7 members to 12 members. Second, this increase will help include members who are eminent in the field of medical education to get their expertise in shaping policy for medical education. Members who also have proven administrative qualities will become part of the board. Uh, today we are discussing the Indian Medical Council uh, Amendment Ordinance. Gagan, yeah. break us down, what is the ordinance doing now? See, the ordinance was uh, amendment of the Indian Medical Council Act of 1956. It was bought first in September 2018 and it was created a bill which was passed in the Lok Sabha and again it was amended in January and now uh, promulgated again by the President uh, in, in February. So the bill was passed in January by Lok Sabha, it could not be passed by Rajya Sabha. Yeah, it was and not. And since passed. the, you know, Parliament was coming to an end, yes, an, ordinance that is the reason was, this amendment an ordinance was necessary. Ordinance was necessary. And what exactly is the ordinance doing? See, it is uh, maintaining the functionalities of the dissolved MCI basically and uh, the Board of Governors, BOG, which is functioning, it has been increased from 7 to 12 and secondly, the uh, the super session, the period of the medical council has been decreased from three years to one year so that the, it can be constituted earlier. Okay, so the earlier board of governors which superseded the MCI was seven members, seven members and now, now it's 12, 12 members. members. Yes. So what is, you know, the new members, that are, the five new members that have been added, are they members with administrative experience or are yeah, they? They are members from medical fraternity but with proven medic, uh, administrative capacity. Okay. So they'll be nominated by the central government and they'll be uh, a general secretary above them and which will be again nominated by the government and uh, he'll have an administrative office will have in control of these 12 people. Okay. Like Yathan, you know, uh, one of the things that a number of experts have talked about is the fact as to uh, this ordinance is one step towards, you know, reforming as to how medical education and regulation of the profession will work in the country. So what are these, you know, reform steps that are needed? Mm -hmm. uh, well, obviously, you know, a professional MCI is one of them. But what do you think are the other reform steps that are needed in, let's say, medical education in the country? So, um, if we look at the medical education, the way it is being imparted in the country as of now, there are different areas that we need to focus on. First is that we need to ensure that the kind of doctors we are creating, they are able to cater to the people at the community level. So, what we are talking about is that people who are able to work at the primary and secondary care level. So what's happening these days is the way our health system is functioning, the public health system, there is a lot of overload on the tertiary care systems. So what we need to do is we need to ensure that the doctors that are passing out of the medical colleges, they are willing to go and work at the primary <coughs> and secondary care level. That is one thing. Second is that we need to bring in the changes that we are observing in the healthcare delivery globally. It might be use of newer technology, use of digital health, uh, different ways of communicating, ensuring active participation of the patients in the treatment process. So all those things have to be built in the medical education system per se. Also what we need to do is we need to ensure that the medical graduates are good at administration as well. So these are some of the issues that we need to bring in, in the reforms. But, but let me ask you, ask you something. Uh, you know, I, I was reading somewhere that, uh, you know, a number of state governments require that if you're, you know, if you're studying in a government medical college, uh, you have to mandatorily work at a primary health center or on the ground in the state for a fixed number of years. 
So, you know, why are you saying that there is a lack of doctors at the primary care level in the country? So first, uh, this provision is there in few states. It's not uniform across the country. And B, there is a very so-called easy way around this provision. So you may pay a specific amount of money and you can get the bond dissolved. So what's happening is that not many doctors are choosing to go to the rural settings and work there. So that's why uh, when I say that we need to bring in that reform so that doctors voluntarily choose to go to these places and serve. So that is the kind of reform we need to bring in. So Gagan, what, what, what do doctors need to do or you know, how do we convince doctors or how do we incentivize doctors to not only work in big you know, metro or city hospitals but also work at the villages and on the ground? See, uh, there are actually four provisions with the National Medical Council Bill which was introduced and passed in Lok Sabha in 2017. It is still pending for the Rajya Sabha and this is a continuation of the same process. So basically, the government wants to reach more people and it made, wants to make things more accessible. The ethics needs to be maintained. They have uh, uh, ethics committee now for doctors uh, which has been proposed. And other thing is that the reassessment of the doctors, like the CME, we used to have CME credit points and the uh, different state registries. Uh, there is no central uh, uptake of the CMA credit points. So, uh, see, medical is an evolving field, as Sir said. It's, it's continuously the education and the improvement in technologies take by leaps and bounds. Things are happening so fast, you can't even imagine the procedures which are coming. So, we need to reassess, and the only way we can do that is uh, the way government is functioning right now. I think this is in the right process. So, Yatin, your comments on how do you ensure that uh, people are up to speed with the latest academic developments or what's happening in the field of medicine? So uh, we need to probably bring in changes the way we teach. We need to incorporate the newer teaching technologies. We need to ensure the way we assess our uh, students that has to be updated and revamped so that they are able to uh, bring in these newer <coughs> elements that they need to learn. So that will require a change in the curriculum. What we also need to look at is the, the time, number of hours we are devoting to different subjects. Is it in accordance to the number of patient load that we have? The burden of disease, uh, that gives us a good clue that what kind of diseases these, patient, these uh, doctors they face when they go to the practice. So we need to have a proportionate kind of distribution for different subjects in the curriculum. Also what we need to do is we need to bring in these uh, technological advances in the teaching methodology per se. We also need to bring those changes which make it more uh, practical and hands-on rather than theoretically based. We also need to ensure that once this MBBS course is over, the doctor is equipped to go and serve. Okay, great. Gagan, so you know one of the things that the ordinance is talking about, a number of experts have also talked about is what should be the constitution of the MCI? Should it be a fully elected body as it is or as it was currently till some That's time ago? That's a very ago, good point. Or should it be a mix of election nomination? So what is your view? See, uh, like uh, the Indian Medical Association is autonomous, a fully elected body, and uh, Medical Council was, before it was working, it was also an uh, it was a elected body. And the government has proposed nominated bodies. So the nominated bodies, I think, it should be a mixed bag of both things, so that some representation for election can also be there, and some hold of the government can also be there in the machinery of the administration. So probably a body which is responsible to the central government with a mix of yeah. nomination of experts Percentage and of doctors also some plus administrative representation also, from doctors or electors. So that's Yatin, close the program for us. What is going to be the impact of this ordinance and other such reform measures for the country? So basically what we are looking at is that we are approaching towards NMC. So this ordinance is just a stopgap arrangement till the NMC bill is passed and it's uh, rolled out in the country. So it's probably uh, going to reform the way medical education is being regulated, the doctors are being regulated and the profession is being regulated. Great. Uh, thank you Gagan Yatan for joining us on this discussion. It is time for us to end the show today. You can watch our shows on the RSTV page of YouTube. We will be back with a new issue and a new episode. Keep watching Rajasabha TV.